Let's move on here to the Patriots because they are coming off a bye and they're almost never on the main slate. So it's pretty easy to forget that this team exists, at least for me. But they're facing a pass funnel defense, a defense that encourages you to pass against them in the Eagles. So we got to dig into this offense specifically since they added Mohamed Sanu. If we look at week nine against Baltimore, they had Edelman, Sanu, and Ben Watson all play 100% of the snaps. Philip Dorsett was at 99%. Nobody else played more than 42%, so this actually does help narrow things down. The backs are all gone for me, but I do like the, the pass catchers. Sanu in that game, had 14 targets, Edelman had 11, and nobody else had more than five. Watson was a guy with five, Dorsett had four. And Sanu, it wasn't just like bunny targets. He got some downfield work too. He had three deep targets there, Edelman, Dorsett, and Watson each had one. Edelman had four targets in the red zone, while Sanu had two. And then Watson and Dorsett had one apiece. So clearly, this offense is going to revolve around Sanu and Edelman, which is really fun in this spot because Sanu is only $5,800, and he seems to have a blend of both floor and upside. I think that he's cash game viable there and probably one of the first receivers I would turn to. The same is true for Edelman. Uh, he's a bit more expensive at $7,400, so a bit tougher if you're paying for Christian McCaffrey. Dorsett, $5,300. I have a bit of a fear of what could happen here if he loses snaps to Nikhil Harry, who is active. Uh, the same is partially true with Ben Watson at 49 if Ryan Izzo and Matt Lacoste are able to return, but I think that they're both considerations. I just feel less certain about them than I do Sanu. So Sanu, to me, I think really is a priority at $5,800. And Edelman needs to be in our player pool, too. So, Brandon, how do you feel about this Patriots passing offense in Week 11? I like them. Uh, I just wanted to ask you before I you know, really got into it. Does it matter to you that Tom Brady's not been great this year? Um, like, should that be a thing for us? Like, I know his... I, I know I understand they traded for Mohamed Sanu for certain reasons, but... Right. I mean... I, I keep my Tom Brady takes <laughs> for 2019 to slack, so I'm just kind of doxing me here a little bit. But, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> I, I think that he's been, a, he's been good enough in plus matchups, and I consider this a plus matchup. Like, if you okay. look at the teams where he's faced bad pass defenses... 22.96 against the Giants, 24.92 against the, the against Washington, 20.14 against the G He's had 20 FanDuel points every time he's faced what I would classify as being a bad pass defense. I don't put Baltimore there anymore because of Marcus Peters, because of guys coming back from injury. Cleveland had Denzel Ward and Greedy Williams there. So I, I think that I classify the Eagles as being a bad, a bad pass defense, and so that makes me feel better about him and in turn to new and Edelman. So that, that's my answer. Took me a while to get there, but I'll go with that. Yeah, I mean, I'm not I – have, I have nothing against Tom Brady. I have nothing against what you just said. Uh, but against uh, bottom half pass defenses and Philly's 21st, uh, Brady's average 0.16 passing net expected points per drop back, which is above the league average over the full season – uh, which is 0 0.10, but right. against bottom half bottom half pass defenses, uh, the average is actually 0.18. So he's been below average by that measure. His success rate's also below ma uh, below average uh, against bottom half pass defenses. So I probably just overthinking it. Uh, no, I, don't think, I think it's fair to mention that he has been not Tom terrific uh, this year. Yeah, and like I, I know that the weapons haven't fully been there, and I understand that they right traded for Sanu because they needed some help. Um, but yeah, I mean, regardless, I'm still in on Sanu and Julian Hedman yeah. pretty heavily. Um, Go ahead. I'll... I, I don't know if I'm going to make either a core play, especially Edelman at the price. Um, I think I'd probably like a few other receivers right around 58 to like 62 more than Sanu, but I wouldn't fault you if you went with Sanu number one there. I think he is my number one. I think he's a core play for me. Um, John Brown is the one guy who gives me a little bit of pause of putting uh, Sanu over him. We'll talk about him later on, too. Uh, but I think that Sanu is a, going to be a core play for me. And when I when we talk about, or at least when I talk about Tom Brady's you know lack of efficiency, it's not a, a shot at him. It's because their left tackle has been out for most of the year. They didn't have their center at the beginning of the year, or they, don't, they won't have them the rest of the year either because of blood clots, I believe. Uh, so it's not an indictment of him. It's an <laughs> indictment of the surrounding system. As a Jared Goff fan, I feel obligated to mention, quarterbacks 
their play is dependent on the system around them, and Brady's surrounding talent isn't that great right now. 